So thanks for the warm welcome and for giving me the opportunity to talk about that platform. It has been a pleasure to be here for the last three weeks and look at other people's developer portals and presentations. Um, I have learned a lot from that and I'm already filled with ideas and hope I can light a spark of interest in some of you as well. Um, the structure of my presentation is as follows. I'll introduce myself and the company first, then I'll tell you about the customer journey, how we manage our portal, and a little bit about our metrics. Hi again, um, my name is Daria. I'm managing the documentation team at App32. Um, I have joined the company last August as a technical writer, and I'm very proud of what we were able to achieve with my team. Um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or drop me a message if you have any questions after the presentation. So um, App42 is a geospatial data and analytics provider. It's your one-stop shop for Earth observation data and algorithm for it. Uh, it's obviously not a simple concept to explain to a user. For example, what is the difference between multispectrum and chromatic bands? What is synthetic aperture radar and how you can use it to your advantage? What acquisition mode to choose? Mono, stereo, and tristeria, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, it's a very complex industry that uses very specific terms. And our goal is to make it accessible and help our customers make informed decisions. In the documentation team, we aim to explain everything in a clear way so that even a beginner can understand it and discover this beautiful world of geospatial data and the opportunities that it opens up. Um, first, I want to explain what is that that we provide access to exactly. There are four main parts to our platform, catalog, tasking, data management, and analytics. Um, let me quickly fix the resolution of the video. Ah, it's already fixed. So our catalog offers archive imagery. It means that uh, satellites or aircraft already captured this image some time ago. It's useful, for example, when you want to compare an area to the current state of an area to how it was before. We provide access to both uh, commercial imagery as well as to free imagery. For example, the collection you're looking at right now is Sentinel-2, an open data collection provided by the European Space Agency. Um, tasking. Yeah. Uh, so tasking functionality allows you to task a satellite to capture a specific area during a specific time period. Uh, you have more control over tasking because you are ordering an image with specific parameters to suit your project's needs. So while the catalog provides access to something already captured, tasking allows you to order new geospatial data. So here you can see me filling out uh, the tasking order form and then eventually clicking next and ordering. Um, yeah, um, the data management functionality provides a way to interact with our storage asset coming from tasking or catalog. Um, here you can preview your assets, check their specifications, and download individual geospatial features. We also allow for an individual feature preview, for example, uh, to preview the, just the red band or an asset, and here you can see me doing just that, previewing a specific uh, feature. And uh, the analytics functionality lets a user apply analytics to geospatial data to generate insights. For example, a uh, geospatial image can be enhanced by using specific algorithms, or another example, an algorithm can compare spectral bands and provide insights into the density or health of the vegetation captured in this image. And here you can see me specifying the area, then estimating the cost of the job and eventually running the algorithm. So yeah, estimating and clicking run. Um, uh, now, a brief walkthrough of how developers can explore and utilize our resources. Uh, there are three main ways to interact with our platform. The user, the user console, sorry, uh, that you've seen on my script captures just now, the REST API and the Python SDK. Uh, the last two are intended for developers, while the console is a user-friendly way for non-developers to interact with our products. 
Um, usually, when when customers come to our platform, it's business decision makers, not developers, who assess the functionalities that we offer by using the overview provided by the console. After that, developers make use of our API and SDK to build pipelines and place big orders or create advanced analytics workflows. Um, a standard customer journey is to register, choose the data source and order data, then analyze the order geospatial assets via the data management system, and if needed, apply analytics to it to generate insights. Um, so this is where we step in and guide users that need help. Uh, you can see on the screenshot, I highlighted all the places on the main page of the console that eventually lead to the documentation. Um, the sidebar on the right is customizable and shows all, um, like a set, shows a set of links, of documentation links relevant to the specific console page uh, the customer is looking at. Uh, it provides more flexibility and gives us more control over what gets displayed. This leads us to the documentation hub. Uh, this is our main documentation portal intended for users just browsing and figuring what is it that we do, but mostly for users who want to get started and need help to perform specific actions on the console. Or they want to get an overview of a certain process, or for example, compare the functionalities of different offerings. Our API documentation consists of tutorials and the main API reference page. They complement each other while the reference is intended for more experienced users, tutorials provide step-by-step -step API walkthroughs for those who require more guidance. Um, the SDK documentation is currently hosted separately from the main documentation and contains all the info that's relevant to SDK users, the reference, sample notebooks and tutorials, and the change log. Um, so now let's discuss how this is managed. Um, the Documentation Hub is a static website created using Gatsby, a React-based open-source framework uh, with the use of MDX, a file format that combines Markdown and JSX. We can include interactive components and elements in the documentation, allowing for a dynamic and engaging experience for users. The portal also includes a search functionality powered by Algolia's search indexing service. As for the API reference, we use Redocly. It provides a clean and intuitive interface, but we are planning to explore README, as I've seen here in the developer portal series that many other teams are already using it. So we'll also give it a try. Um, our SDK documentation is built using MKDocs, a fast and simple static site generator. I've already mentioned that the SDK documentation is now hosted differently but we are planning to merge it with the main portal. Uh, we use Jira for project management and issue tracking, GitHub as the central version control system, and Circle CI as a tool for the automated testing and continuous deployment of documentation. Um, we adopt the docs as code approach, as many of you do as well, with an emphasis on collaborative work and version control documentation, aligning it closely with the development cycle. So we're a small team of three technical writers. In our team, we have this mix of people with writing and with just spatial experience. Um, we maintain our main documentation portal, SDK and API documentation, as well as help with UX writing for console features. Um, there are also people from the front end and the design teams who are working with us to help build new components and features for the portal. In our workflow, Tasks are generated either by our team or stakeholders. Um, these tasks are then sorted into two categories, those that enter our backlog for future consideration and those that are selected for the future sprint. Um, we conduct uh, sprint planning sessions every four weeks and following the planning phase, we dive into the execution phase. Uh, this approach allows us to maintain a structured and organized workflow but there is always some, room, uh, some space for handling urgent requests. Um, wanted to quickly show you our task breakdown. 
Uh, you can see here on the pie chart that almost half of our tasks get completed very fast. Around 33% of tasks take around one week to get completed and only around 20% of tasks take longer than one week. Um, we are currently at the stage of our documentation cycle where we need to, you know, bulk up and close communication gaps. So we are getting a lot of things done quickly. Um, ensuring constant communication and collaboration between the documentation team and other teams is the cornerstone of our processes. Uh, we always encourage cross-functional collaboration and strive to create an environment where a person from any team is welcome to come to us with their feedback or an idea. Um, subject matter experts are the key to producing insightful documentation. So what we do is we show them the impact of their contributions. Um, our collaborative approach encourages SMEs to see the payoff of their involvement, and not only in the quality and accuracy of the documentation, but also in the overall success and adoption of our product. Uh, and one last thing I wanted to talk about with regard to how we approach writing. Uh, the main priority for us is to write documentation using simple and clear language with global English principles, ensuring that our message is accessible and comprehensible to a wide audience that, in our case, often consists of non-native English speakers. So let's get to our metrics. Um, we analyze the most viewed pages by section to understand user preferences and tailor our content strategy accordingly. Additionally, check and views by country and channel type enables us to identify trends. Um, by monitoring organic search keywords and our search engine results page positions, we gain insights in our SEO performance. We also assess our total SEO score to identify areas for improvement. Tracking referring domains helps us understand the sources that direct traffic to our documentation. Uh, this insight enables us to optimize our outreach efforts and strengthen our online presence. We have a support form integrated into our documentation. And what we do is we analyze originating URLs from our support requests to identify common pain points and areas that need additional clarification. Uh, this information guides our efforts in addressing user concerns. Uh, we also monitor technical information such as browsers and screen resolution to ensure that our documentation is optimized for various devices and platforms. And about the tools that we use. Uh, we use Google Analytics, Ahrefs and Looker Studio. Google Analytics allows us to gain in-depth insights into user behavior Ahrefs enables us to conduct thorough SEO analysis, track backlinks, and monitor keyword performance, and Looker Studio visualizes all the data. So yeah, uh, that's the end of my presentation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions now, or if you think of them later, feel free to reach out to me directly after. So I'm giving the mic back now. Thank you for the presentation. And uh, let me ask you the following. Um, as a technical writer in a team of three and working with so many other teams, where do you experience tur turbulence at this stage in the Portmo's life? Mm. Um, I mean, we have uh, established very good conversation i would say with teams so i think we are at the stage where we are very um, you know proactive in the documentation team so we want our stakeholders to review all the things that we want to put out we want them to give us their feedback etc cetera, etc cetera. and sometimes they are so busy developing you know some like product <laughs> like decisions, making product decisions, developing, like if it's engineers developing then some APIs, etc., then it's maybe the, the turbulence is that we might not be getting as much feedback as we would like to, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, last um, May, well, last May, 2023 May, in the Write Docs, um, conference in Portland, um, one of the lead documentarians um, from, oh my God, I wanted to say the company too fast, 
I'll get there. Anyway, uh, he was talking about the layer cake, the three layers, uh, where they decided that they don't just have um, conceptual documentation and hard technical documentation, but they added a layer in between, which is a little bit more than just top business docs, but not yet deep into the code um, to deal with um, the smoother transition through the complexity. And, and you mentioned that there's um, an incredible jargon, um, a lot of different types of services. So here I would start to imagine that this kind of layer cake approach would would work, maybe, I'm not sure. Um, how do you deal with the the necessity to get to give a quick overview, to get people quickly into where they need to be, whereas the overwhelming amount of choices? How do you balance that? And and, and what do you orchestrate there as, uh, as documentarian? Um, we've actually, yeah, we've also identified that we have uh, this kind of like area for improvement that for example, when we document a collection integration, you can simplify, you know, so much. Like there are some terms that you cannot get rid of. You have to use the term, and the term could be very complex. Like, and there is no way around it. So we are moving forward with our reference section. We are adding like specific parts to our documentation that explain, that give more, you know, like um, textbook you know, description of stuff. Um, for users, like for, for users who don't have so much spatial experience, but still want to experiment with the platform, still want to order something, but they don't want to dip too deep. They just want us to give them an overview of what they will get and what is the best um, like product to choose for their use case. So we, we do provide that. Yeah, actually, I didn't know about this like cake layering system, but actually it's something that we already are doing. It's from Stripe, by the way. Sorry for <laughs> blackout. Uh, what is on the roadmap for the portal and the team? Um, so we want to try um, try out uh, README, as I've already mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, as the API reference, like uh, content, man content management system. Uh, we want to move our SDK documentation to the main portal, just like because of some legacy reasons. It's mm -hmm. it their its own portal, but we want to. Uh, like tidy up this loose end and yeah we want to experience further maybe with a little bit of ai maybe also like figuring out what other interactive components we can use on the platform but like front end wise we can how like front end wise we can um enrich our platform uh, our documentation so yeah i would say th these areas mm -hmm. and Two more questions. How do you use code lab or, or use cases to facilitate a practical learning experience? And how do you make sure that the video tutorials are not overlooked? Uh, we are currently not using video tutorials. Like uh, we'll start with the last question. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, like our marketing department is, is not focusing on video tutorials right now. So we are like, we don't, Put them anywhere so mm -hmm. we're like mainly focusing on like texts and instructions stuff like that and can you repeat the first question yes do you use code lab or use cases to facilitate a practical learning experience uh no we don't use code lab so we have like different uh, code blocks that we use like you can change like the um the language of the code block that we included like on the tutorial section of our API subsection of the documentation. And uh, we do have notebooks that we integrate into our SDK documentation that you can, you can just like open them on GitHub and then just start uh, building your pipelines. And yeah, like I have, like I'm putting some hopes on uh, README because it enables this, um, like this console experience of API requests, right? That you can just fill out the forms, you can it uh, validates your inputs and stuff. So I would say this might be the tool that we will use to bridge this gap. Mm -hmm. Are you planning on extending your team? Yes, we are, <laughs> because we we have a lot of stuff to document, and we would like to uh, to to write more and to add more. Um, documentation because I said like in this bulking up stage of our documentation it yeah we, we need 
definitely we need more typing hands. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Daria, thank you for the presentation and um, for the tour.